According to the American Cancer Society, colorectal cancer is the third most common cancer in both men and women. The colon, rectum, and cecum make up the large intestine, the lower part of the digestive system. Cancer occurs when cells grow and multiply out of control, damaging surrounding tissue and interfering with the normal function of the colon or rectum. The majority of colon and rectal cancer cases are sporadic, meaning that their cause is unknown. The remaining cases are hereditary. Hereditary cancer can be passed to an individual through one of their parents. These cancers are rare, generally occurring when a person is in their 30s to 40s. When colon and rectal cancers are detected early, there is nearly a 90% chance for a cure. Most colon cancers begin as a polyp, a small, non-cancerous growth on the colon wall that can grow larger and become cancerous. As polyps grow, they can bleed or obstruct the colon. Often there are no symptoms of colon cancer in its early stages, but when symptoms do occur, they include rectal bleeding, blood in the stool or toilet after a bowel movement, prolonged diarrhea, a change in the size or shape of your stool, abdominal pain or a cramping pain in your lower stomach, or a feeling of discomfort or urge to have a bowel movement when there is no need. If you notice one or more of these symptoms for more than two weeks, see your doctor. Remember, it's important to detect cancer in the earliest stages when treatment can be most successful. There are several methods for screening and diagnosis of colon cancer. They include the fecal occult blood test, which examines a stool sample for traces of blood. Sigmoidoscopy, in which a flexible tube with a tiny camera is inserted into the rectum, allowing the doctor to view the rectum and lower colon. And colonoscopy, which also uses a flexible tube with a tiny camera, but allows the doctor to view the entire colon. When it comes to screening, it's not just going for the procedure. You want to have a complete examination of the colon, careful withdrawal and taking time to screen the colon, removal of all the polyps, and a plan made based on the number of the polyps, and the type of the polyps. Covering all these bases is critical for colon cancer prevention. Falling short on any one of these could miss that opportunity to prevent that cancer. In terms of the colon cancer screening, if you do not have anybody in your family with a history of colon polyps or cancer, one should start at the age of 50.